Well, what struck you at that press conference this afternoon, I was going to say, from Downing Street, because the Prime Minister is stuck there in isolation at Chequers in Buckinghamshire, was not just the sort of metaphor uh, of that for this moment of uh, Freedom Day, the Prime Minister there uh, stuck there like the country is stuck in some sort of uh, paralysis. The complete absence of phrases like Freedom Day or Great British Summer struck you, but the policy de development on nightclubs uh, really jumped out from that press conference. The requirement to have a sort of COVID passport, as it's sometimes called, certification proving you've had jabs in order to get into a nightclub uh, in September uh, of this year. That tells you a number of things, that government policy is zigzagging like crazy. It has on this particular uh, passport issue, reflecting the tensions and worries uh, inside government. It tells you how much the government wants uh, jab uptake to increase amongst younger uh, members in the population. But it also probably knocks us forward to, well, where else will these passports be required? The Prime Minister was asked, well, what about pubs? Uh, might you require a passport to get into a pub? And he ducked away uh, from that. But the description of the sort of environment that uh, clearly the government feels requires a passport, uh, closed spaces, crowded spaces, close contact settings, well, that would cover quite a few pubs you could think of. So a really surreal 24 hours uh, here. The nightclubs have been opened, of course, but at the same time, the government is defining the cautious behaviour that it wants from people now after this once called uh, Freedom Day. When it defines what cautious behaviour is, it sounds as though that definition is don't go into a nightclub. At the beginning of the report that follows, there's some flash photography. Please, please, please. Please, 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 be cautious. Conflicting signals on Freedom Day. As nightclubs opened from midnight, the public was urged to keep observing many COVID rules voluntarily. And at his press conference just 17 hours after nightclubs opened, the Prime Minister raised the prospect of closing them if they don't conduct COVID checks at the door. I don't want to have to close nightclubs again as they have elsewhere. But it does mean nightclubs need to do the socially responsible thing and make use of the NHS COVID pass, which shows proof of vaccination, uh, a, re a, a recent negative test, or natural immunity as a means of entry. I should serve notice now that by the end of September, when all over 18s will have had their chance to be double jabbed, we're planning to make full vaccination, the condition of entry to nightclubs and other venues where large crowds gather. That will feel like backdoor compulsory vaccination to some, like these anti-vaccine demonstrators gathered in Parliament Square today. The government says it's a pragmatic step necessary to keep such indoor gatherings safe. On the day once dubbed Freedom Day, hundreds of thousands were confined to their homes having been told to isolate because they'd been in contact with someone infected with Covid. The Prime Minister, himself isolating at his official country residence in Buckinghamshire, said after pleas from hospitals and other services who'd lost staff due to isolation, the rules for critical workers would be relaxed immediately. We will protect crucial services, including the staffing of our hospitals and our, our care homes, the supplies of food, water, electricity, the medicines, the running of our trains, the uh, protection of our borders, the defence of our realm, by making sure that a small number, a very small number of named, fully vaccinated, critical workers uh, are able to leave their isolation solely for the work that I have described. Had you been asking for this for a while? Did they listen at the last minute? Uh, we've been asking for this for about four or five, six days. That, that's when it really got very difficult. At the beginning, middle of last week, uh, trusts were saying to us they had now reached the point where they were worried that patients were coming to harm unless they could bring staff back. That will leave many others in isolation as infection rates rocket to levels not seen since last winter. I suppose I'm a, a prime example of what happens when the plan doesn't work properly. This Conservative MP amongst them pinged first thing this morning. Does it feel like lockdown by stealth to you? Uh, no, it feels more like lockdown by cock-up.
<laughs> and I think that that's the, 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 the truth of the matter. I'm sure the government doesn't want to confine people to their homes. If they had wanted to do so, uh, they wouldn't have declared today to be Freedom Day. As of today, Scotland moved its COVID restrictions to what it calls level zero, but some social distancing and mask wearing rules remain in place. In Wales, COVID restrictions have been eased, allowing up to six people to meet indoors. In Northern Ireland, further changes could be announced on the 26th of July. As for how England deals with COVID, the Prime Minister served notice the new order begun today is very much work in progress. Government plans mutating, sometimes at speed. Hello from Boscombe Beach in Bournemouth, a popular spot and justifiably so, even before most of the Covid rules in England were abandoned. What happens next depends very much on how people behave. Conservative MP Tobias Elwood is one of the local MPs for Bournemouth. He joins us now from Westminster. Uh, is this the Freedom Day that you imagined it would be? Uh, it isn't. Uh, pleased to see you at Boscombe Beach. It's a great part of uh, the country. But no, absolutely not. We need to remember that this adversity that we face is not linear in the way we approach it. It's constantly mutating, it's changing, it's advancing. And we need to be able to adapt to that. And that's why you saw some of the changes coming in today, far from the Freedom Day that was presented perhaps in the past. Don't forget this roadmap was put together back in February. So the fact that we can ease some restrictions, I think is very, very welcome. But we're far from out of the woods. This is not the final chapter at all. There could easily be a third wave coming. But thankfully, the relationship between hospitalizations and deaths and cases has been somewhat broken. Never mind February, it's all going to be a bit topsy-turvy, hasn't it, in the last 24 hours? Because Boris Johnson uh, announced just a few hours ago that people going to nightclubs will have to be double vaccinated by the end of September. It does invite the question, if nightclubs aren't safe then, how are they safe now? Uh, it's a good question. The point, though, is, is that we didn't want to move to a world where there was the haves and the have-nots. Imagine the pressure on any nightclub making that decision now when so many young people have yet to receive that vaccination. What we're doing is giving time until September to make sure that everybody can get covered. And that means we can all then enjoy things like nightclubs, knowing that we've been double vaccinated. But I repeat the point. I'm sure all of us expected this summer to be out of the woods by now, where we wouldn't have to go down this route. We're seeing around the world spikes uh, in cases increasing. A new mutation could come about. We need to be cautious. But Boris Johnson has said uh, this evening he's concerned by the continuing risks posed by nightclubs. So, so what do you think? Should people go in spite of those risks or not? Well, this is a balance that we have to make, is wanting to open up our economy. I'm actually more concerned about the pandemic, as it's called. I would love to have heard today uh, the government actually uh, liberating those who have been double vaccinated from having to self-isolate. That's, that's still a month away. I would have brought that forward. That's the big change I'd like to have seen. I'm pleased to welcome the fact that we're vaccinating children as well. That'll help us finally get herd, uh, herd immunization. You mentioned being liberated from the pandemic, at least for a period yesterday. The Prime Minister looked like he had liberated himself, didn't he, from, from self-isolation. At first, we were told he wasn't going to follow the same rules as everyone else. So what do you say to people in your constituency and elsewhere who think that maybe they should have a get-out clause too? Yeah, I think it wasn't well handled. I think the Prime Minister, number 10, recognises that. I, perhaps the assumption was made that they, these people, the Chancellor, the Prime Minister hold key roles in helping us tackle this pandemic and therefore they could somehow justify being part of a pilot scheme. Clearly that isn't the way we should go forward. Leadership is about leading by example, having a vision and a reality that takes uh, you with the people that you're trying to support. And I think that's now recognised today. And we're looking now, by some estimations, at millions of people having to isolate. Uh, as you say, would that signify that the government has lost control? And would it indicate that restrictions will return at some point? Well, the whole purpose of uh, the government's guidelines, clear communication, is to make sure that we have the consent of the nation. We must take the nation with us. As soon as people start to delete that app, for example, uh, because they feel that they're going to affect their economy, they're going to affect their workplace, then, of course, okay. we defeat our ability to, to uh, defeat the, um, 
uh, the pandemic. It's important that we wake up to this. That's why I want to see this change as soon as possible. Okay, Tobias Selwood, thank you very much indeed. Well